to Beyond Hair Summit 2020. Woo! Can we get a woo -hoo? Can we get a louder woo -hoo? Can we get a louder woo -hoo? so excited to host you all today um, and we're just going to be starting off with our live podcast and we're going to be talking about the messy road of an entrepreneur. Yes. So we're going to not hold back, we're going to get quite real with you all tonight, <laughs> well tonight, it feels like this tonight. morning. <laughs> this morning um, and so yeah, so just to introduce ourselves, my name is Oyin Adebayo, I am the CEO and co-founder of Neo Enterprise. And I am Laulu Dada. I am co-founder of Neo Enterprise and I'm also Chief Marketing Officer. So, guys, we are so happy to see you. It's actually amazing. And this feeling, we've been waiting for this feeling for a long time. Yes. It's been, what, four or five months in the making. <laughs> yeah. So seeing all your faces here is so encouraging and so exciting. All right, so Messy Road of an Entrepreneur. First of all, um, one of the things for us in our podcast is that we like to laugh a lot. So if we're laughing, sometimes it's not that funny, but we just yeah. laugh. Just, <laughs> just flow with us, flow yeah, with us. Exactly. <laughs> so um, first of all, we want to define what an entrepreneur is. We've actually got different definitions. We definitely have different definitions. And I think this is one of the beautiful things about being co-founders that we um, we don't, we're so different and we are made up of different makeup and different DNA and we come together and we are able to champion co um, collaborating and building together. And that's what we wanted to gather black women for, for the sake of us coming together and collaborating and building. So. My definition of being an entrepreneur, I believe that an entrepreneur isn't necessarily born an entrepreneur. I believe that an entrepreneur can be developed through life, through experiences. Um, they might start as a hustler. They might start, maybe some of you did, selling chewing gum at school <laughs> or like selling sweets. And then they become, they learn these skills over time and they develop the um, the aspects of building a brand and they develop how to lead teams and all these things and they eventually become an entrepreneur. I think it's something you become. It's not something you are born as. I think we're born as entrepreneurs. I think entrepreneurs are born to be entrepreneurs. I think that we all, you know, entrepreneurs have a purpose and yeah. they don't sit still, just like I'm not sitting still right now. <laughs> um, they, they are relentless, they're mm. resilient, they don't stop. And sometimes some people don't have that language. So when you're selling those sweets at school, you are an entrepreneur. When you are thinking of a new idea to go into the marketplace with, you are an entrepreneur. But also sometimes we just need, um, you know, the knowledge and the and the guidance to be able to pivot us the right way. So we're saying the same thing, aren't we, technically? Yeah, but I, I don't think you can develop into it. I think some people aren't <laughs> as relentless and as others. So you think that, in essence, business, there are business women and then there are entrepreneurs? <laughs> yes. I think there are entrepreneurs and I think there are people who, who, who may start businesses or who are subject matter experts. Sometimes some people may just be really good at something, okay. um, really good at a specific area, but that doesn't mean that they're entrepreneurs. Because with an entrepreneur, you need the mental um, capacity and you also need that vision. And I, mm -hmm. if everyone was a visionary, then I don't think we will be able to function. So we actually do need subject matter experts to be able to right. pay the entrepreneurs. And those people help build visions in essence. Yeah. So sometimes you're not necessarily a visionary, but you can partner with someone who is yeah. and make amazing things happen. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So okay. um so um, we know there's some entrepreneurs in the room. We know there's some people who are subject matter experts in the room. Yeah. And we also know people that are probably strategists in the room as well. So it's okay to not be an entrepreneur. It's okay to be a strategist. It's okay to um you know also be a subject matter expert. I've, I'm, I know I've worked with people who are subject matter experts who are trying mm. to be entrepreneurs yeah. and it's not working you know, as well for them. So. Why do you think it doesn't work though? Because um, many of us, especially as black people, I think many of us naturally know how to hustle, whether it's for grades, whether it's for um, a new job, whether it's for a new business idea. We just have a, a, a culture of hustle. We know how to push and get things done when we really want it, ultimately. So, you know, how do you balance that? I, I think black people have tenacity. We're naturally tenacious mm. in, in the way we um, work. Um, so, why do I, your question is, why do I think that some people aren't entrepreneurs and some people are? Mm. 
I just think that's the certain qualities that <laughs> I think there's certain qualities that some people have that natu that they naturally like they naturally are born with, mm -hmm. while some other people grow into it, as you say. Yeah. But it takes time. So I think personally, naturally, I am quite aggressive. Not ag I'm not aggressive. Gosh, no. <laughs> I'm quite aggressive with what I want. Right. Um, and I think that's a key key, but not all. Not everyone is as aggressive as that. And I think to be an entrepreneur, you need to be, you know. Do you not think that um, you grow into that though? So like some people not, not people don't always know what they want immediately. Mm. And then it takes time, especially as a budding entrepreneur, it takes time for you to really define what it, what your vision looks like, what it is that you want, what you're trying to achieve, why you're doing it. That's true. And yeah. then, and then as that grows, the hunger increases mm. and then you become unstoppable. But okay. That, that's a process. You don't just wake up and like, I have it all together. Let's go. Like, mm. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Okay. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah. All right. So one of the things also that we wanted to kind of cover is that it does take a couple of years. Sometimes when we see Instagram, we see the Instagram age, we see, you know, on LinkedIn that, you know, this person has just secured this and secured that, but we don't realize the hard work that has gotten there. Mm. You know, it's, I know Daniela posted something yesterday on, on Instagram that, you know, although it's taking four or five years for you to secure that first contract, that's still okay. Yeah. Um, sometimes we think that because we've not been successful for four years or for five years, um, that we it's time to quit. And I want to encourage everyone here, if you've been in this entrepreneurship journey for so, for a long time, and it's not, it may not be working out for you, maybe, you know, please keep pushing, especially if you feel like the vision that you have yeah. has something to impact the, the community that we're in, has something to impact um, our nation, has something to also impact the world that we're around. Because at the end of the day, as entrepreneurs, we, have, we bring value and we solve problems. Mm. And that's, that's, you know, that's who we are, right? And I think it's also about understanding that just because you don't see anything immediately doesn't mean you should give up. And it just you could almost use the analogy of looking at um, a tree and looking at maybe a weed. Weeds pluck up really, really quickly, don't they? Um, you know, they're seed sown and in two, three days it's up. But then if you look at an oak tree or a, a really, really big tree, you see that it takes time for that um, root, that shoot or root to, root, yeah. a root, to poke up through the ground, but at the end of the day, the, the impact is quite different. You know, weeds multiply very quickly Absolutely. and they produce very quickly, but an oak tree is more, you could almost say is more of like an institution. Mm. And then mm. maybe the weed is a serial um, entrepreneur. Do you mm. know what I mean? It's okay. quite different. Mm. So um, understand that in your journey, because you don't see immediate results, doesn't mean that you should give up. Yes. And I think sometimes because of how quick culture <laughs> is and how quickly we receive information, how quickly um, we get this or that, how quickly we can get food, we expect the same thing with our business journey. We want to wake up tomorrow and have 20,000 pounds in their account. We mm. want to see 10,000 followers. And sometimes <laughs> it takes being committed to that journey mm. um, and being um, loyal to the process. Absolutely, absolutely. One thing that just came straight to my mind um, is um, we're Christians. Um, one of the scriptures or one of the Bible characters is Joseph. Joseph gave, gave it and told his brothers, I have a dream. I'm going to be the biggest out of all of you. And it's funny because they put his brothers put him in the pit. His brothers actually threw him in a pit and said, you know what, you know, and he became jealous and envious of mm. him. And you see that he actually brought solution to Egypt and he was able to actually provide resources when there was famine in the land of Egypt. So it's so powerful for us to actually hone our vision and really believe in it. And I, one of the things as well as entrepreneurs, we need to be um, really um, p um, passionate about what we know we have in us and what we have to bring into the world. Yeah. We're not just entrepreneurs to make money. We're not just entrepreneurs um, to, um, you know, make the next million but we're, we're entrepreneurs to make an impact um, one of the but that next million is a nice idea <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> absolutely yeah you need a million to make the impact absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But, but at the same time money mm. is not the end and I think for us over the last couple of days we realized actually money does not actually do 
make the impact that we want to make in itself. It's only a means to an end. Yeah, it's so, a tool. Exactly. As, so as entrepreneurs, you know, whether you're doing, you have a hair business and whether you have a jewelry business, how are you making impact in your community? How are you making impact in your, in your city? How are you making impact in your nation, especially as black people? Ouch, sorry. <laughs> especially as black people. Passion. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I get a bit passionate. Especially as black people, what are we doing to contribute to our economies? Mm. Um, I study development economics in, in a master's development economics yeah. um, currently. And I, it's interesting when I look at developing countries and see how much entrepreneurship as a recent is beginning to increase growth in developing nations. So please, please, please do not think that your idea is just something for you. It's actually something for your city. It's something for your nation. And it's something for the globe. Yeah. The world needs you. The world needs your ideas. Yeah. Um, and it's valid. It's absolutely valid. Completely valid. Sorry, I got and I think <laughs> that this event, the the reason we gather every year is because we're passionate about validating those ideas. Yes. Because I think that sometimes our experience, you know, we don't want to talk too much about the black experience in Britain and blah, blah, blah. But sometimes the experience makes you feel um, like the idea or what's inside isn't worth it, isn't worth bringing out, isn't worth investing into. And this event is to validate the idea and to actually point out the truth that your idea is important and it does need to actually come out of you. It does need to be carried out. You do need a business plan. You do need to put things together to help this thing grow up and actually sprout and be fruitful, if that makes sense. And one of the things for, um, for us as well is that, you know, when we were, for example, going through the pitching competition um, applications, we realized that there's so much power in, in educating our people. Mm. Um, there's a lot of people that don't actually know some of, some of you know, the key words for a pitch deck or key words for, for a business plan. So please educate yourself. You know, it's good to have an idea, but get coach, get um, coaches, get mentees and uh, mentees, mentors um, to be able to guide you through that journey. And don't just jump in and, and create a logo on Instagram. Take time out to really think, what is this vision? I need to write it down. I need to make it plain. And so that somebody else, if they're going to pick it up, um, and can actually pick it up from where I stopped from. Yeah. If you were to drop, God forbid, no one's going to drop dead. <laughs> but if you were to, you know, drop dead today, someone needs to be able to pick that up to continue that legacy that you have started. Um, one of the things that we need to talk about, sorry, though, I'm sorry, I cut you, sorry, <laughs> um, is, is our journey, because we've been talking about everybody else. Yeah. What's, yeah. Our, what's our journey? Okay, let's start at the self-doubt. Yeah, self-doubt. It's possible to have faith and doubt. Yeah. It yeah. is very possible. So it's very possible for us for, um, for us to believe so strongly in what we think that we're called to do. But it's also possible, you know, to have doubt in that process. Mm. Because we see that, okay, we see where we're going, but sometimes the hurdles can actually push us back. But it's that actually resilience that continues to make us move forward. And I think um, that journey in between the starting stage and whatever the end goal is, helps you to almost overcome the insecurities and the fears. And you will find that certain hurdles are there to specifically help you outgrow certain behaviors or certain mentalities that you might have. Um, sometimes um, a million can't just drop in your lap because there are certain insecurities that wouldn't allow you to Absolutely. use that resource effectively. So that process helps us just iron things out mm. and just takes away all the extra stuff that isn't necessarily helpful mm. for where we want to go. It's funny because when we start the journey, we get excited and sometimes we allow, pr allow pride to get in our way. And one of the things for us that we've learned so strongly is the power of humility um, and is the power of operating in our weakness, asking in our weakness. Um, this event would not have happened if we weren't actually like, guys, we need your support. So it's so important to actually you know, say, guys, I need your help and also to be humble. Mm. If you think that you, you can do anything by yourself, I think for, for this event most especially, I realize that I cannot do anything, anything by myself. Yeah. I need people, I need people. And so Connect. that's why it's so important for all of us here to make sure that we are connecting. You do not know, you may see the person sitting next to you and they may just have an idea, but you do not know if that they're, they're the next 10 billion pound idea or they're the next trillion um, pound idea yeah. so please connect because people is powerful yeah connecting with people is super super powerful being rich in people is yeah. so resourceful and you'll find that um 
it helps you on your journey. There are things that you do, you won't know unless you have a conversation. Yes. Um, and the conversations that I've been able to have, even in the last year, have almost shifted a paradigm in my mind and a way um, a way of thinking. And it makes you it helps you with your innovation because you realize, okay, nothing's new under the sun. Everybody's technically recycling ideas and make, packaging it in a different way and making it more exciting with new technology. But you learn the strategy behind that and having conversations and connecting with people does that. It really does. So what is it about trying to come into a new city? Because obviously we've been running this event in Nottingham for the past two years. Yes. It's the first year in Birmingham. I am originally from Birmingham, but I'm this not. is the first event in Birmingham. So what, what is, what, what's, this been, what's the experience been for us? <laughs> I roll. Um, I think that the experience has felt like pushing a train, mm, honestly. It, it has felt like that because um, what, do you, what do you do when you come into a new city, but you, you know you have an idea that works, you know it's effective, you know that the testimonials and, and, the, and the aftermath of it is really really powerful mm. but then you're in a new city and nobody really knows who you are mm. and, and everybody's kind of like who are these guys <laughs> why are they renting the millennium point for this event <laughs> yeah and then you, and sometimes that immediate response where people are more cautious and they're not all all the way sold um can feel intimidating at times yes. but i think what i learned is not to feel intimidated by people's pushback or people's um cautiousness because actually it helps you to further understand um what it is that you're driving and it helps you to look at how you communicate that better um in your branding especially for me in branding in the messages that you're sending out um what what is the story you're telling and what questions are you answering? Absolutely. I mean, it's funny because when I was speaking earlier on about the story of Joseph, we saw that Joseph went into Egypt, um, you know, um, firstly, and he went into prison. And, you know, I think it was 21 years he was in prison for yeah, before, you know, he actually then was able to actually speak to the king and be like, I actually can help you. So yeah. it's so important that even though you're coming into a new city, you know that you're on this, in the city for a mission. You're, yeah. you're in the city for a reason. There's a purpose why you're in that city. And actually, the city needs you. The yeah. city needs be, um, beyond hair. The city needs new enterprise. Yeah. Because without us, this can't be happening. Yeah. 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 So Completely. absolutely. Okay, so um, so one of the things as well for us that we've, um, you know, experienced is just climbing up the summit. So it's called Beyond Hair Summit. So obviously with a summit, there's a peak, okay? There's yeah. a peak of the mountain and climbing up. And you're like, okay, God, I can, I can do it. Climb, climb, climb. But then you get tired. What do you do as an entrepreneur when you are tired? Because you're, you're doing the marketing. You're doing um, the finance. You're, you're doing your everything. customer acquisition uh, manager, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're also admin <laughs> you, and personal assistant. Exactly, social doing media everything. manager. Yeah. Right. So doing how everything. how do you manage being tired? How do, how have you managed being tired? Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think I've mastered that yet. Mm. Um, and I I think that to sit up here and say we. we we know how to do all these things would be a lie. And I think every entrepreneur is still working things out to a certain degree. Absolutely. For me personally, what I found really helping was actually just having conversations with people, not necessarily about the work I was doing, but just connecting mm -hmm. with people because I am very much a people person. I, I love connecting with people. It's what I do. Um, so just having genuine connections about other things that weren't about work or mm. what I do. Um, also going to the cinema because I like yeah, it. Really and is. just finding ways to um, not necessarily drop the ball, but just to recline mm. and rest. Mm -hmm. I think rest is important and working that into your schedule is really important. If you're one of those people who's really, really hard um, on yourself and you work, 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 and then you crash, I think that sometimes you have to learn from those patterns that it's not necessarily uh good to work 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 until you crash because then the recuperation stage takes longer mm. why not work rest into your pattern mm. so that you don't have to have like a meltdown before you realize actually i need to slow down a bit um i think for me like planning this event um tr trying to you know run a business and also doing a master's can be quite tiring and you could actually have um you know a toll on your mental health 
Um, on top of that, I'm also, you know, um, an administrator at my church. So it can be, it can be quite a lot and it's mm. easy to get really, really, really overwhelmed, overwhelmed. But what I wind down is actually, I think about the why, why am I doing all of this? Mm. What is the reason? Am I doing this for a name for myself? In fact, if I was, I, I realized that if I am, <laughs> that's gone out of the door, like long time ago, long time ago. If, if it wasn't a long time ago, at the beginning of the start of this event, it went out of the door. I've, I've been willing to put my name on, on the line just so that this can happen. Um, but I think for me, what I, what I do back is go back to the why. Why am I doing this? Yeah. And, I'm, and I sober myself up to understand that actually there's, there's a reason why and people actually need this. When I see a lot of people come to me with an idea, um, but they don't know how to, what to do with it, that's my why. Mm. When I see um, people say, oh, I've got this um, amazing thing that I want to launch, or I'm really, I'm, I'm really broke, I, need to, I, I wanna make some money, I really wanna do this, that's my why. Um, but aside from that, when it comes to myself, I make sure that I'm connected with God. I make sure that I'm I prayerful um, because that's what sustains me and that's what keeps me going. Mm. And I try to go to the spa. I try. That's the word, try. <laughs> I try to go to the spa um, or just to relax sometimes. So that's kind of how I've dealt, yeah. you know, dealt with this, this road of an entrepreneur. Yeah, completely. And then how did you find... Um, Resilience past rejection, um, because I think the average person maybe get rejected once, twice, <laughs> third time, it's kind of like, yeah, we're not doing this again, no. Um, so how have you managed jumping over those hurdles of rejection? Because do doors will close, doors do close. Absolutely. Partnerships do end, collaborations do come to an end, but then there's also opportunity for new things to come forth from that. Yes. Um, not everything is about failure, but you you learn from the things that you didn't do well. So how have you been able to like jump over those hurdles? I have to think Especially about Especially like the nose. I, What's the first the, thing you do? The when key you get word a no? is we move. Dan, <laughs> Danny and myself. Hashtag we hashtag move. Hashtag we move. Yeah, we move. Next not next next thing. Um, the first thing I think is we move. I get sad, and I've got to the point now where I can't even cry. I just scream or something. <laughs> Can anyone relate? Yeah, like, I'm so, ah! sorry. Wow, guys, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so I, I just scream. Yeah. Or like, I'm just like, oh, I call somebody. And have a, a good I'm just vent. Apostle Emmanuel. Can we give him a round of applause? <laughs> I'll call Apostle Emmanuel and be like, I'm just, I'm done. Daniela, listen, this is what's happening. <laughs> So it's so important to have people who you look up to, who can give you advice yeah. and you can speak mentor, to. Yeah. And I've been there before you um, and I've walked this road. Daniela has run events, so she knows how it feels. So I can call her and be like, this is what happened. Yeah. This is the deal that just fell through. Um, what can we do? And then she sobers me up and then she corrects me. So it's so important that we have people that we speak to. Yeah. Um, at the same time, again, the why has to be super strong. The vision has to be super strong. If you want to make sure that your vision is strong, make sure it's at the forefront of your mind. And when people begin to question you why you're doing this, make sure it's at the forefront of your mind. If you need to put up a vision board, even you know, on in your room to sh to show your why, do so because that helps in kind of reiterating why you're doing this. Why are you doing this again? When you're when you have minus five pounds in your account, why are you doing this? Yeah. When you. The business journey is meant to make you what millions, yeah? yeah, yeah, or billions. But you have minus five pounds. How does that match up? Yeah. Okay. So, like, the why is what keeps you going. Okay, and and, and encouragement of other people as well. Yeah, hundred percent. Mike Omani um, from what, what's it called? The newspaper. The Common Sense, the Common Sense, Sense Network. Sense Network. Yeah. Um, he always says this thing where um, revisit your goals weekly. Mm. or if you can daily Good. because it helps keep it in front of you you see it and you know it's almost like a to-do list anyone like to-do lists yeah. yes so um it's almost like your goals can almost become that weekly to-do list making sure that you're working towards yeah. um x y or z and I, what i found is breaking down those goals into maybe three-year plans so what am I working yes, towards yes. by 2022 Absolutely. and that's not three years but yeah you get the point um, <laughs> 2023 yeah. but what am I working 
towards by that point because it makes it more bite-sized and easier. Sometimes we think about all the things we want to do and it's overwhelming and you're just like, I don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. um, so start with the smaller things, the more manageable things, the bite-sized goals, and then work from there. Awesome. So we're just going to ask, um, we're going to throw it to the audience for anyone who has questions for us. Um, you know, so if you have any questions, please just raise your hands and we'll be throwing around uh, this hey, amazing microphone. microphone. Fancy one too. <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah, that way around. Okay. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how would one go about finding a mentor? Like, where do they even begin to look? Yeah. Ooh. Okay. First off, we have multiple workshops. We've got um, loads of speakers today. If you happen to attend a workshop and you like um, what's happening in that workshop and you want to connect, with that person, approach them and have that conversation, do that. And be, don't be ashamed about saying, I actually need help with this. Are you the sort of person that would be able to help me with this, uh, with what I have in mind? And if they're not, they might be able to signpost you to someone else. Um, start by having conversations. Let people know what you're trying to achieve. I went to a property investment um, conference a few like years ago or something like that. And the speaker was saying how, if you let people know that you're a property investor and you're looking to invest in property, chances are someone knows someone who also doing the same thing or wants to actually um, find a deal or something like that. And it's a, a similar sort of technique um, or principle. Tell people what you're trying to achieve. And most times they'll say, oh, I know so-and-so, or have you thought of this person? Have you thought of connecting here or going to this event? Does that make sense? Yeah. I think just to add to that as well, for me, I'm quite specific in who I want to mentor me. Um, so I, I study them a lot. So there's a peop the people that are, that are my mentors, they don't know yet. Yeah, they actually don't know. They actually don't know, they're my mentors. One day, They're one mentoring day. me via Instagram. They're mentoring me IG via Live. Instagram. Yeah, I'm watching their stuff, I'm commenting. So it's all important to engage um, with people that you know you like. The first place to start again is today. If you don't feel like you have a network, first place to start is today. Network with high net worth individuals, trust me, you don't want to take advantage of the people in the room. Um, that's the first thing. And also just, just study them before you kind of approach them and say, can you please be my mentor? Because mm -hmm. sometimes, sometimes we ask for mentors, but we're not ready to be mentored, mm -hmm. okay? Um, you're not ready to go through the corrections. You're not ready to go through um, the lashing because your mentor is not there to sweet talk you. They're actually there to point you in the right direction and that's going to take a lot of humility. So if you've got a level of pride, you need to check that. Um, and make sure that you're humble enough to receive a mentorship as well. So and that can be a journey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a journey. Mm -hmm. Actually, thank you for that. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Um, my question is, how do you deal with competition, especially when the business you're going for is supposed to better the community and the, co um, the competition is within the same space, same circle, same network, especially when right now we're here to support one another? Mm. I think with competition, I like to see it as collab, like I like to see us working together first before kind of approaching them as competition. Um, also, kind of study, why are they comp competition? What makes you different? Because guess what, Microsoft and Apple competitors, but yet they still work together because guess what, we've got Microsoft Word and our Apple Macs. So, Look at it as collaboration. And I think sometimes it's innate within us, especially as black females. To um, compete. To compete. Our parents say, don't talk to strangers or um, don't make sure that don't. My, one thing my mom always tell me, don't let anyone touch your head or whatever. <laughs> um, or, you know, so we, we can be a bit weary sometimes mm. um, unconsciously. So have an open mind and have a conversation with, with potential competitors as well and see how you can work together. Because guess what? You're doing the same thing. And it's, it's obvious that you're doing the same thing, but what makes you different um, and what makes you stand out as well as can you work together to yeah. achieve the same mission? I concur. Hi, ladies. Hello. Um, I just want to ask, because you know they tend to say that you know you shouldn't go into business with your friends, Ooh. and I know that you've been friends like from uni. So Ooh. how has that journey been, and how did you kind of balance friendship as well as being business partners? Oh, <laughs> that's juicy. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, 
How do we manage being friends and business partners? We don't always get it right. Sometimes yes. it's more business than friendship. Yes. But I think the fact that we started out as friends first mm -hmm. and the fact that we value one another really helps um, keep us grounded. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the right word. Um, sometimes it's easy to um, feel like even your friend is your competition and you realize actually you're working towards the same goal. Mm -hmm. um, so things that we do, we try and have intentional phone calls that aren't necessarily about business, but just like, like check in, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. How's your mum? How's this? How's that? Mm -hmm. And making sure we do that regularly so that we're not just becoming so business focused, yeah. um, but also when it's time to work, it's time to work. Absolutely. And that's something that I had to learn pretty quickly because I wasn't used to working with my friends. My friends were my friends, you know, playmates, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's have fun, <laughs> kiki, kiki, kiki. Um, and I realized, actually, no, I, I need to, when, I, when I'm having meetings, even though she's my friend, this is business. So um, I have to switch on that part of my brain. And sometimes it just takes not being over familiar, even with your friends and mm. understanding that, oh, okay, we're trying to work towards something and this person has value. They're not just that person that you can like cuss off, even though I don't do that. Mm. But like, you know, things like that, or like um, just make random jokes with, I, I've learned to understand whether that's boundaries appropriate and, and whether that's not yeah yeah i think boundaries actually um is one of the key things for me i'm mean, knowing you know what boundaries to put in at what time um again i don't think we've we've gotten it right from the from the onset um and it can be a tricky balance to have because sometimes when you need a friend and you don't have a friend you've got a business person who's you know so, yeah. and also communication as well, <laughs> yeah. making things quite clear, mm. having hard conversations. There's been a lot of hard conversations that we have had, really hard conversations. So having hard conversations, mm. if you feel like that friend is meant to be your business partner, don't go and be business partners with your friends because you think they're nice. Mm. Go in it because they're actually adding value to the vision, yeah. okay? Because, um, and actually being friends helps us to be able to run this better. I, I don't know what I would do without loudly being in the, in the, yeah. in the Neo team or I don't you know I just don't know what I would do um, it, it would be a totally different um, approach you look at um, Bill Gates he, he partnered with his friend to start his you know Microsoft so there's a lot of things about don't start business with your friend because you become too friendly and you're not able to tell them what to do it's just about being able to communicate mm. and having hard conversations sometimes as well as um, being there for them as well yeah, and, we, and just having, off the back of what you're saying, those candid conversations, like, as a business partner, I got it. As a friend, I did not like it. <laughs> Being honest and, yeah. and also embracing conflict because yes. conflict is not necessarily a bad thing. It doesn't always mean that there's something wrong. It just means that something needs to be corrected Absolutely. so that you can progress in that rela relationship. Um, and once you understand that, you don't run from the fact that, oh, I feel a type of way when this happens. You can actually address it. Okay. We're going to take just two more questions and we'll have to. Hello. Um, my question is, as women in business, um, soaring um, and just climbing the ladder, when you walk into boardrooms, I don't know, you're going to pitch or you have meetings as black women like yourselves are there things that you keep on the back of your mind when you walk into these places so that perhaps you don't fall into certain stereotypes mm. um are there things that you constantly are conscious of um so that you're not viewed as you know another one you know um, <laughs> <laughs> um if you could share a little bit on that that would be great thank you um because I, I do mo most of the pitching, mm. I'm just myself. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if I'm sorry. I don't care. I'm, I'm just myself. Um, because if you can't accept who I am, then maybe you're not the best person to invest in my business. Or maybe you're not the best, you know, yeah, you're not the best investor to invest in my business. Um, that doesn't mean she's over familiar. And no, of, yeah, of course. It doesn't yeah. mean I, I'm still professional. I don't start saying, you know, I don't start swearing. Or I don't start using overly coll colloquial language. I still compose myself. But at the same time, I mean, I'm myself. But having said that, there's been a time where I was invited. I was invited to um, the opening of um, and Nottingham Trent University's um, new business hub opening. So it was, a, it was a big deal, though. 
chancellor and the vice chancellor was present and Oyin got invited. And as I walked into the room, it was just, I was the only woman. And you realize it. And I was the only black woman in the room. And I was like, crap, what the hell? Like, what am I doing here? Like, <laughs> and I began to doubt myself. I was like, why am I in this room? And I began to, I began to almost shake. Um, and I realized that actually was intimidation. I was intimidated by people's faces. And actually, in, as a businesswoman, you cannot be intimidated by their face. You can't be intimidated by um, what they, what, how they present themselves. Do not look at their faces because it's, you know, it could be a stumbling block for where you're going. Mm. Know who you are, be authentic, and bring that to the table because the world needs it. Yeah, and and obviously not listening to the voices in your back in the back of your head that mm -hmm. say you shouldn't be here. Exactly. Um, and understand that it's not them that necessarily validate you. That validation doesn't come from them. If they validate you, that's great. If they affirm what you do, that's great. But that's not where your validation should come from. One more question and we will be finished. Hello. Um, my question is, how did you know that it was time to start receiving investment? Um, and did you have any struggles with that? Mm. <laughs> Okay, how we knew it was time to receive investment is, so we've been running, just for those that don't know, we've been running, I've been running Neo Hair unofficially um, as a side thing since I was about 14, I'm now 24. Um, and, you know, we had built a clientele of over 200 people. Um, when I knew it was time was when I actually had to innovate and I realized I can't innovate um, I've got the clientele, but I can't innovate with the funds I have right now. So I need to go out and seek investment. So I had traction. So tra a lot of investors are looking for traction. I, we had traction already, but actually be, to be able to grow and to scale up, we realized that actually if we don't seek out more investment, we're going to crash. We're going to crash. So you so either I, end or, or move up. So um, that's how I knew. Um, I think sometimes we can go out for investment a bit too early sometimes when we just have an idea um, and we may have like maybe like one or two customers. Um, it's really important to kind of know where you're at and what you what you need and speak to investors as well. Get to know what they're looking for. Um, that's why today's perfect yeah, because we have investors um, going to be speaking about, you know, how to raise investment. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And I think um, we've sat down with investment advisors and they've asked us questions which in in other words, meant prove it. You know, yeah. you have this great idea, prove it. You you know that you can build a following of X or you know that um, this many people buy this idea or buy into it, prove it. Where is the proof of that? And sometimes that requires research and actually studying the industry that you're, or the field that you're trying to create business in. <laughs> yes, so um, one of the things is what I was, um, I was watching Felcon um, I don't know if has anyone heard, heard of Felcon before. Felcon. No. So it's a fel, it's a conference about failure um, that's held in in America. Americans are so used to talking about failure, but that's not something we've embraced here in the UK. Mm. And the co-founder of Uber was speaking about some of the several businesses that he had um, started and started failed. and failed. Um, and he went to seek out investors. Um, I think the first investor gave him about I think it was a hundred million pounds um, dollars. Sorry, um, and. Basically, the investor then sued him to get the money back. And so he had he hired 16 engineers, mm. and he had bills to pay, and he had no money to give, to give them. Now, um, <clears throat> at that point, like people were people couldn't he couldn't pay his staff. He couldn't pay his staff for actually actually three months. Um, so he went out again to seek investment. Just because it's about to fail doesn't mean actually you can't go out to seek investment, to make it pivot to the next stage. Sometimes that's the right time to, to seek investment. Ex exactly. So he went out to seek out $300,000 and he managed to pay his staff, you know, um, for the three months that he had owed them. And then um, and then he didn't ask them to go part-time. And that helped him to actually be able to go out and say, you know what, this idea, you guys want it, but I need your help. So this is where weakness comes in as well. Mm. I actually need your help. If you don't buy into this, we could close tomorrow. We could crash tomorrow. So we need your help. So and sometimes we're afraid to do that. Yes. Um, because we think that it, it devalues the business or it makes us look 
week mm. or whatever it is. But that honesty actually helps because then investors know, okay, <laughs> you know, they know why you're and coming. They're human you're, beings, for, you know, for the, for yeah. first of all, they're human beings, right? <laughs> yeah. They're firstly human beings and we forget that. <laughs> we treat others like robots when they're human beings. Human beings have feelings, mm. they have a conscience. So if you go to them and ask for help, hopefully they would want to help you. Yeah. Hopefully. And I believe it was Christine Intim. Um, she is the Global Ex Accelerator um, founder and eco global eco... Global startup ecosystem. Yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and she said something in one of her summits one time. She said that um, as a, a venture capitalist, she understands now more than ever that it's actually about connection, mm. being able to connect with the vision or the idea that people are selling. And sometimes, and it, it is their money in certain cases. So you, you have to understand that even if they say no, sometimes it's not personal. Maybe they just, they don't mm -hmm. get what it is that you're trying to do. But finding um, circles of, of investors um, who value what it is that you're trying to achieve is better. And that's why we need black investors because white people don't understand our ideas most of the time. I, I, I don't want to go into, no, I, I'm not even trying to be racist. It's just the truth. And it's not even, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just, it's just the facts. And I, I, I could give so many examples, but I, just for um, confidentiality purposes, I wouldn't, but you know, we need black investors because black investors know our experience and they can connect with us. And so that's why it's really important. But this is where we're going to end it. Yes. Um, so if we just want to say thank you. <laughs> thank you for listening. If you've got any questions um, throughout the day, feel free to stop us, ask us questions. Yeah, come find us. Um, we're